Welcome everyone to this circle that is so, so special for me. Um, put it to don't type. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so every welcome everyone to the circle. This is uh, such a special circle for me because I have here uh, with me um, uh, grandmother Ursula, who is the grandmother of my moon dance circle. And that I've been that I joined two years ago. I'm actually my second year of the moon dance, so it's a nine-year initiation into the realms of the moon and the womb. And, and I also have here three of my moon sisters that are part of the same circle: uh, Diana, Alice, and Yael. Um, Diana did two years, and Alice and Yael did their first year a few months ago. Uh, in Mexico, in Bacalar, so so this circle has been so special for me because it's uh, it was kind of the the end of my first cycle of my spiritual path, which was mostly through through sacred plants and ceremony and connection with the astral realms, and and when I started the moon dance, it was kind of like uh, going back to my body. Uh, reconnection with the earth. It was a uh, very grounding moment for me, the first circle two years ago. It, uh, it took me back to the magic that, that exists in my womb. It took me back to the magic that we women carry in our womb on a daily basis. And, and those are the teachings that I think Abuela Ursula really embodies uh, so well and that she brought to us in the circle that returned to our womb and to our own magic and teaching us that all the magic that exists outside also exists inside of us and that we get to share it every day with everyone around us. Um, the work of the dance is not only women but also men that are outside of the circle holding space and we will talk also about that, of how the work in duality is really important, of uh, having men outside holding space for the woman to go through their own inner work. Um, and I think it's a preparation for what is coming for uh, all of us, for humanity, to just learn to make space for women, learn to make space for the feminine to, to be and exist and to and to connect with its magic so that it can actually share it with, with our men and with the world. Um, so it's, uh, it's really an honor to have you here, Ursula. Um, and so I, I maybe I would like to start with just um, letting you share a little bit of the origins of the dance, of the moon dance. Um, and just to give some context, broader context to all of you, the moon dance is four days. It's once a year on the full moon. Uh, we do it on March in our circle. So it's four days where hundreds of women gather. We fast uh, to purify our bodies. We do two temascals, which are sweat lodges a day, to also search that purification. And all night we join a sacred circle where we dance in a ritualistic setting. There's many, many rituals that we will hopefully cover in this call um, that are intentionally designed to create that connection with the universe and the magic, uh, their portals of magic. So, um, so this dance has been happening for thousands of years and it stopped for hundreds, for 400 years and it just started again uh, 35 years ago. And, and it's been traditionally kind of um, underground and hidden for, uh, for a few decades. And I feel now, I feel a lot of grandmothers coming out and sharing this more and more. And, and I'm so honored to have our grandmother Ursula to actually be one of those women that are carrying the voice forward so that it can touch more people. Um, so yeah, so my first, question for you, Ursula, is uh, maybe to just tell us where the dance comes from, the origins. I know it's rooted in the Aztec tradition and, and just um, 
why, where is it now in the history of the dance? Like, why are we starting to have more and more women joining the moon dance? Okay, Magdalena. Well, first of all, thank you. I want to express my gratitude for opening this space to the moon dance um, and to share because for many years we, the dancers, have experienced a lot of, um, uh, you know, very, a lot of process to get information or to have access to the elements or understanding or the ceremonies even. So in, in the last years, we have uh, the message to open and receive many people from everywhere to that want to learn from these traditions. And that's why we are here. And thank you so much for this space. Um, well, the, the moon dance is not, uh, well, we don't have a lot of information about it, I mean, from the past. We know for sure that women have their own spaces to pray and to fast and all the rituals that correspond to women, as well as men. Um, but the, the, nowadays, as we know, the moon dance started when, when three women were working as support in the sun dance in Mexico. Um, in this case, my leader is uh, grandmother Tanami and she shared the, the history about it. And it's only about, I um, mean, it was a vision. It was, it was a vision and meanwhile, the sun dance was happening. In a dream to the grandmother Patricia, um, she, she saw that women, circle of women have to happen now. And then um, grandmother Isabel, Patty, and Tonalmi start to talk each other to organize the, the circle. And the main inspiration was because they were studying the codex. And there is a page in the codex workia that represents a circle. And all of them are women. And these women are, are dancing at, at night with, uh, and what is interesting is that all women are, it looks like they are from different parts of, mm -hmm. of the world or places. And then that, uh, that part of the codex was mainly the inspiration to, to organize the moon dance accordingly. While the, the moon dance was happening, uh, fortunately, grandmother Isabel uh, passed away and then uh, grandmother Tanami uh, had circle and grandmother Patty had another one. And then they start to work uh, at the same time, but each circle, I mean, uh, well, two circles at the same time. And when I arrived to the moon dance, we were only about 180 women. And that happened on 2010. And then suddenly when it was my fourth year, we were like 400 or 500 women. Something happened, obviously it was evident that uh, an energy was everywhere because suddenly many people, many women from all around the world arrived to the, the circle. And then nowadays they are about a thousand. <laughs> so yeah, I think that, well, it's important to mention that many in the Aztec dance, some, some dancers are, well, they think that moon dance is not an ancestral uh, thing because we don't have enough information to support that, only the, the codex. Um, but I think that when you start something and you're, when, you, when you talk to people or you invite people to make a ceremony, to heal yourself, and then with only few years you have a lot of people going to the ceremony from everywhere around the world and you don't have a campaign or you don't have marketing for that then in my opinion that's the permission and that's the blessing of the great spirit and more when you have and you feel really the medicine working in your body and not only in your physical body but also in the spiritual way that you um 
that you have relation with yourself, you know? And then if you feel good with you, then you start feeling good with others. And then you don't need to support that with an ancestral tradition. You only have to do it because that's what the world needs. The world needs that people is happy and is experiencing happiness and peace to then share that. So now in, in Bacalar, well, we start two years ago. And well, that's very interesting because I was in the seventh year of my moon dance and I, I really compromised when my grandmother Tonami gave me the ring and we were, we were many, we were like 25 or 30 women receiving the ring. And she said, this ring represents the compromise that you have with this tradition to open a circle because we need to share this medicine to others. If you don't, if you're not going to open the circle, don't accept the ring, don't take it. Then I, I was like, oh, oh, what should I do? And when I, I honestly, I was thinking about it, saying it's a lot of you, have, it's a lot, a lot of work, sorry. A lot of responsibilities guiding women. I at least, I, I can guide myself at least, I don't know, my family and many thoughts came to my mind. And, but you know, when I realized that in the last seven years, I transformed my life completely and I healed a lot of stuff that I had when I arrived to the moon dance. I felt a lot of gratitude and I say, I have to do it because I received a lot from these women, grandmother to now meet. I received a lot from the elements. I received many things and it's unfair that I don't pay. And if she's asking me to pay with this, just to win a new circle for more women, then I will do it. And then I compromise, I took the ring and then, well, the time passed. And then when I was nine years, receiving the last uh, gift uh, that happened on October. And then on March, I was starting the moon dance in Bacala. And everything happened super, super easy. And in, you know, the blessings arrive each day. So that I know that I am going with you ladies in a good direction. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. One of the most beautiful things for me about, about the moon dance is that high level of commitment that it requires. And that for me has been beautiful medicine to receive because there's so many shortcuts now to spirituality. There's so many you know, easy fixes of, um, of different modalities. And, and having that commitment of nine years consecutively before getting to a point where you can actually go out and share that medicine with others, it's really, it's, it's beautiful and it's for me what real devotion is about. And so, you know, for those of you that are there and may not know about the traditions, it is a uh, it's a four years consecutively, the commitment, and, and then an additional five years to be able to open your own circle. And then only you are considered to have enough wisdom to share with other women. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, the other beautiful thing is that to, to enter into this era of sisterhood and it's been so beautiful for me to share already two years with my sisters that are here in the Zoom call and, and to see each other grow and to be uh, mirrors for each other, not only in the dance, but outside of the dance through the years. Through, uh, I can't even imagine how it's going to be in nine years for us to have this ongoing reflection of us growing with each other. Um, up to the point that we can become grandmothers to the tradition and have our own circles and support each other. And, and that's also one of the, the healings that this earth needs today is healing those wounds and that competition between women and caring sisterhood. And, and something that I, I would love for you to speak on Ursula is um, is that you, you welcome a lot of uh, non-Mexicans in the dance and also especially some women that don't even speak Spanish. 
and as far as I know, it's the only circle that's so welcoming. And we have Yael here, for example, that was in the dance this year and had um, some grandmothers that were actually doing translations. Um, so yeah, do you want to share a little bit about that, uh, about why you're opening it up to other women? Yes. <laughs> well, I had a, a, wow, that's a good question. Mm, well, honestly, I don't know what is happening in the other circles. I see only the circle of, of the grandmother Tonalmid, and she's always trying to offer different, you know, uh, facilities and service to all people from everywhere. But it's kind of difficult when you have about a thousand women. Um, but in this case, talking only about the circle in Bacalar is because when I was, uh, when I, it, it was my fourth year in the moon dance. I, I was, to, you know, uh, able to receive the pipe and the first cane that represents the four circle. The, sorry, the four, the first cycle of four years, and I was very, I was experiencing the in the in all the ceremony. I felt really angry. I was very disappointed with the ceremony. I felt a lot of bad things. And I, when I was talking to myself, I realized that I was, I was frustrated because many women that arrived before, I mean, before, like a week before ceremony, they were coming from different countries, from France, from Canada, Australia. And when the Mexican women arrived to the ceremony, we had to camp far away from the circle and far away from, from the fire because all the people from other countries were around. And I honestly was very disappointed. And I say, when I have my circle, it would be only for Mexican women. And, and that was an, an idea. And then when I, and I also I said, this is my last year here. I cannot be with this woman here. And then when I, when I uh, talked to my grandmother Tanami and I expressed my frustration and I say that how was possible that all these women were first, she was very, she was very kind with me and said, the first thing we have to stop in our mind is to think about borders, about um, races, about nationalities. They, these ladies here are your sisters. And it's more interesting how these people coming from that far away come here to learn about us. And then we have a lot of sisters here in the next town and they don't come. So you have to start paying attention to the energy, not to the world as simple as it is. You have to pay attention to the energy and realize what is telling you this energy and embrace it. And then everything was clear to me and say, yeah, you're true. So now when, when I start the invitation to the moon dance, the first women that came and attend the invitation were from different parts of the world say, yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> and then that's why I welcome you everywhere. And obviously, I, I I see you, and then I I I am I empathize and say, okay, if I would go to Israel or to Canada or wherever, what how how I feel if I receive this or that? And then I start thinking about it and say, okay, we need a special Timascal program in English or a special group, and that's why I want to share um, as better as possible I can. And all, and all of you are welcome as well, as well men from everywhere is the same. We are, a, we, are a, we are a huge race. I mean, we are all the same. We have no any difference. The difference is in the mind, not in the spirit. Mm. Thank you so much for, for doing that, Ursula, and welcoming all of us in this circle. Um, it's... Um, so some, some people on the Zoom call are asking how, how do you join the moon dance? And I think it's an interesting question. So uh, you actually get invited to the moon dance. So either by the Abuela itself or by one of the people, uh, the woman of the circle. 
Um, and for me, it was very special because I got invited by Maria Yatriki, my dear mm -hmm. life sister. And after um, we were in a moon eclipse in January uh, 2019, and I had this deep, deep connection with this with this moon that was hanging in the sky, red. Um, and and, and I, I told her, this is the biggest mystery of my life. Okay. It's how can my womb be connected to, to that thing that is hanging there in the sky that no one really knows where it comes from? And how is it that I feel connected to it and that I very often bleed with it myself? And, and she said, I think you need to come to the moon dance with me. So a few months after, I was joining Ursula's first circle with her and with Diana that is here on the call. And, and, and then so she, so when you invite someone to a circle, you actually become responsible for that person. Because whatever she, that person goes through or how she embraces the dance and the level of commitment and devotion actually changes on you uh, because you become the madrina, the godmother of that person. So, you know, my, after my first dance, I was like, everyone, I want to invite all the girls that I know. I need to bring all my yin circle, which is my woman's circle. I wanted to bring everyone in. And Maria was like, just understand that this is a commitment because you need to guide them for, for nine years. And those women need to be ready, because if they're not, then they will um, not allow you to be in your past, because you will create breaks on your own past. So, um, so this year, uh, for the first time, I actually um, brought the Yael that is here on the Zoom call. Um, I had hundreds of women that asked me to join this circle. Like, I probably have every week a request. And, and I've been very selective on just like letting them come, letting them show the commitment and feeling like how much level of actual deep commitment there is to the dance, the respect to the dance. And, and I think that the, the two months before the dance in March, I, I still had five women that were kind of coming. And then the only one that actually made it through is Yael that is here. Uh, that show like an incredible level of, of integrity and commitment to the dance. Um, because the dance doesn't only happen once a year, it happens throughout the whole year. So we have rituals to do in the new moon, on the full moon, and we actually hold each other accountable for all of that. And so, so yeah, it's a process of, uh, I think it comes to you when you're ready. And I think uh, it makes your way to you. And obviously, if you're here in this Zoom call, something is opening up in the cosmic levels for, for you to, to make it there. Um, so it's an invitation from the universe, really. That's how you get in. Do you want to speak to that, Ursula? Or yes, sure. Well, it was very um, interesting the way I received the, the invitation because uh, I had listened about the Sundance before, and when I realized that many circles of Sundancers were opening the circle to women, I said, okay, I'm going to be Sundancer. I was very identified with Sundance and the chants and all the energy, the power and whatever. And then uh, I, we were dancing, Aztec dance in Cancun, and the friend of the circle came with a, with a friend and she was moon dancer, uh, and she invited me uh, and said, you know, the, the moon dance, and she explained me everything. And I was like feeling that I should go, but I was not sure. And because my mind was uh, always thinking in the, in the sun dance. But, you know, when I, I went to sleep and then I received the message that I should go to the moon dance because I had to work with, with the feminine energy. I felt comfortable with men. I felt comfortable with sun dance because that was my tendency. And the, the, the real work and the real commitment 
is to go away from your comfortable life and then start doing what is not comfortable. If you feel uncomfortable talking with more women, then you start working with women because that's the teaching, the real teaching. And then I say, it was about September or yeah, September when she invited me and she said, it's in October. So I only had a month. And when she explained to me all about that, I mean, what I have to do to join the circle, say, no, I cannot do it in one month. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the best as I can. I will wait the next year and then I will prepare my, my costume, my praise, everything I'm going to do at the time. And that's then I, I wait for a year to join the circle of the grandmother to now meet and she invited me. Yeah, but it was a friend of the Aztec dance. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. Um, and so as also some people are asking if the dance is only for women. So obviously the dance can only be, be uh, the circle is only open for women, but there are men that are part of it in their own way, representing the masculine and basically holding space for the woman outside of the circle. So somehow um, men are part of the ceremony, um, but in their own way, right? So for me, was, this year was very special because I went in with my duality and, and we did this work in duality and it was like a whole other experience to do that in that way. And I think it created an incredible foundation um, in our relationship to actually embody myself the feminine and him embodying the masculine at the same time in part of the same ceremony um, and that's something that uh, you also said ursula i think you are probably the first circle that opened the dance circle to men in the last dance of the last <laughs> night yes. uh, and i have that memory engraved in my soul for many lifetimes of me dancing with my partner inside the circle and Yael that is here as well. So what's, um, how is the work in duality? Uh, how do you see it? Well, I think that we, we have many ceremonies. We have the moon dance, the song dance and all, all the ceremonies you want to experience. But I think that the top of the ceremonies is live in duality, share the life with someone else next to you, day by day. That's the real dance. And obviously it's, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, it's, it's the, the best mirror you have about you. And it's shocking you day by day. And when you understand what, what these men in front of you represent, then you, that's the best chance you have to evolve because you choose it and he chose you. And that's why when, when, I, when we were in the moon dance, I, I, the last year I didn't do it, but when, I, when we were in the tech queue and the first, the first night we were praying with the pipe, I had the vision, you know, I closed my eyes and I saw all men and women dancing at the last moment of the dance inside. And then I, I pray and I say, hey, should I do that? Because in the moon dance, never the men are, I mean, have been here. And yes, the responsibility is say, okay, so. And then when, when it was a surprise for everyone. And then when, when you know, the last night, <laughs> all people was around, and I let the men come in and I, 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 I can feel and remember their face. Not only the men, but also women. When you were together, I felt as you understood, without words, without explanations. You only felt what was happening there. And I, I think that it's like the great spirit talking to us saying, this is the way. And it was very clear. <laughs> I cannot express, I don't, I cannot uh, explain how it was it, but yeah. And you know, a curious, a curious uh, uh, information is that the, the keeper of fire 
he was he is doing service for the fire of the moons for the last 15 or 16 years i don't remember and she was dancing and told me ursula this is the first time in the last 15 years or 16 years that i had the chance to go into the circle thank you thank you because i've been serving here and this is amazing thank you so much and then i felt better <laughs> I say, okay i i I had the idea, but now I feel better because my, my brothers felt this work and felt the magic of the love in our circle. And some of them were crying and was very surprised to me because I had never, it's, it's difficult to me to see a man crying. That never happened to me. And then when I saw that, I was, oh, wow, this is a real, a real spiritual work. And I really, and I really appreciate that moment. I, I'm not sure if the next year will happen, <laughs> but this last year happened and I felt very, very good. Yeah, yeah. What a beautiful, it was such a beautiful offering for the men that have been working there to just receive that as a gift. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I feel like you, that maybe it's, it's time for integration. It's time to, to integrate. We all, women are doing their work and men are doing their work. And then at some point we will, uh, integrate uh, into each other and the time is, is coming. I want to open it up a little bit to my sisters that are here um, to maybe share just why the dance is important for you and also some if you have any reflection or question for Ursula or something that you want to to expose or talk about. It's such an honor to share this circle with, with you here as well. Thank you so much, Magdalena. I'm so grateful to be here and that you're opening this space for, for the wisdom of the heart. And thank you, Ursula, so much for sharing this knowledge and all this wisdom. So I resonated so much hearing um, Ursula's story. So thank you for sharing. As um, I realize it's not about what you do, but it's about how you do it. As I enter another circle prior to this one, that was very, very small. And the abuelitas were very silent into communicating what was the objective of the mission. So it was a very interesting process to arrive into a calling of the heart where I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I had to take that path, but also not having the information and kind of feeling drained from the lack of information. And also as a foreigner being French, living in a different place, living in America, all the commitment and the devotion that I was giving into bringing myself there. So I'm so grateful, Ursula, for everything you've shared and your experience and how you can see how when we have a calling that it doesn't really matter where we come from. And I think it's about breaking this system of believings, you know, as we're facing a global pandemic as we created separation and borders and going back into the heart of sisterhood. So, and I also shared the story of the sense that my life being very, feeling very safe around men. And can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, yes, yes. and I had the same experience about um, being so afraid of women uh, because being very misunderstood in a very early age um, and finding that um, the violence of women when they lost the complicity of sharing their vulnerability and they don't feel invited into each other, how they compare each other and they become rival. And so I hide it with men. So it's been a couple of years that my calling for working with women um, came out again. I can't really explain my journey as it feels like sometimes I'm not looking for answers anymore. 
I don't really want to know why I'm doing something, but I know it's so connected to the wisdom of my heart that I have to do it. And I don't really believe in compromises. It's either you're going or you're not going. So when the coding is so strong, um, I felt as a moon dancer being in a circle that didn't suit me. And when I gave back my pipe, it was the most horrible feeling as I wanted to depart and I was devoted, but it wasn't my circle. And I was very confused and I didn't really know what it meant and what would be the other circle. And it was a circle where also you dance in silence, which was very interesting. You're not able to make any sound or any singing. Um, I'm very grateful for it. Very grateful for it. And also it's by realizing what you don't want that when you arrive into the place that you're supposed to be, that you're so grateful and you have no more doubt. I have no more doubt that I'm supposed to be in this circle with you. And I'm so thankful of Diana that uh, came into my life and so close to my heart. And when I mentioned I wanted to come, she didn't even hesitate or doubt me or ask me question. Um, and she was like, you should come. And she invited two person. And the day after I wrote my letter, the other person didn't. And I think it will happen by itself. Either you're committed, either you're not. But for me, what's been happening, it's giving me faith. And I think through faith, you can have devotion and through devotion, you can have discipline. And that's what I wrote. And through discipline, you can have freedom. So this is my guideline. And also the faith of that you are enough that you don't need to travel through plant medicine as everything around you is a medicine. If you want to see it as we're healed, I don't believe as us being healed, as just being feel more that we're disconnected, you know, like to not victimize, victimize things and rather empowering things. We're just disconnected. This creates a dissonance of life, an unbalance of reason where we're just creating noise and we don't see the, 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 the music anymore. And when you can't hear the music, you're disconnected. And this circle, and what's been so important for me is just we all have, and I share that with <clears throat> Magdalena and the yin circle, and I love you, Magda, so much. But I realized that we all have our own system of building things. And when we start trying to force our own system of believing into each other, it doesn't go anywhere unless you have a common mission. And then you let go of the system believing. And then you surrender to not hear, but to listen. And then you take the information that resonates with you. And then you create your own melody that's unique. And then we can make music together. And the moon dance really was very important for me to understand how we can be 200 women so devoted with the same mission. There is no fight. There is no complaint. There is no energy. And even if there is the internal, like for me, my experience, I've not heard anybody like nee, 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 nee. never. Everybody always in the gratitude and then realizing your own shadow, you know, and it's between you and you because it's not about putting blame. You didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. It's more about where I'm at today and how to be gentle to ourselves and say, you know, this I couldn't do or this I broke or this, and it's okay. And next time I won't, or next time I'll be better. And I, or, or I was able to stay in my devotion. And I have so much more power and not to compare power with domination because that's where people are getting very confused. Power is a vital force. Power is gentle. Power is the inner flame. It's the light, it's the fire that burns, the intuition, the creative force. And Thank to you find my power. Sorry. I'm sorry for... Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Yeah. 
Uh, I would love to hear the other girls in the circle. Diana, you've been there in this circle Thank you so with much. us since day one, so two years ago. Um, and you did the main circle before that. So I would love to, to just, you know, to share from you like in a minute, like what did it bring you? What did it change in your life to be a moon dancer? Thank you, Magda, for the space. And I'm so grateful to Ursula for her guidance. I, I've been listening about uh, women, like the moon circle for the moon dance for a while, but it requires fasting and it requires kind of leaving everything that we know and going off grid to take like a vision quest for yourself. And that would always interfere in my mind until I was ready. And three, two and a half years ago, I was invited to, to the bigger moon dance. And my first, and, and as Ursula says, it's, it's huge. It's like a thousand women, maybe seven, 700 at the time. And it was so much going on, too much information. But I did my first sweat lodge with Ursula. And I just was so impressed and amazed by her strength, her knowledge, her ease, her grace. Um, the, the way she combines ancestral wisdom with the actual situation that we're living as human, as women. Um, so I love the way she teaches and I immediately was like, um, in love with her style and when she mentioned she was opening a circle I, I, I was there. Um, for me the moon dance is my personal ceremony. It's, it's the way to get to know myself better, to remove all what's not uh, graceful and all the drama and all the things that just like take energy from us. And it's a commitment with myself and with nature. It's, it's where I learn how to connect with mother, how to learn about her directions, how to learn about her elements. How, cause you know, when you love someone, you have to know about this person. No, you just don't say, I love, I love you. You, you ask these questions, you, you care, you research. And so this is for me, the opportunity to get to know mother. It's great to go to the ocean and to the forest and, and, and say, I love nature, but like, do you really know it? So this is a training and this is the place where I learn about myself through nature, through her ease, through the peace that she brings into my life and, and helps me remove yeah, all, all the trash, all, all the things that don't serve me and that take me away from my purpose. And um, for me, what I've discovered is that my purpose is to be free, happy, and in service. And all those things I, I get to learn from, from this moon dance. I also think um, that's my experience, but I, I think Ursula, you should uh, share with like the audience because they're asking what, what, like, what is the process of the moon dance, like with the fasting, the sweat lodge, all, all the components and uh, and the preparation as well. Uh, so whomever reaches out to want to join the, the moon dance, they know what they're committing to. Thank you. Okay, yes, sure. Um, well, um, this is, uh, I'm going to talk only about the circle in Bacalar because each circle of the moon dance have a guide and each guide had their own preparation things. So uh, here in Bacalar, we basically ask women to in, um, find a new moon to put a saumador or the fire container uh, underground. These specifications I can share once you know that you will participate in a moon dance. But first you have to initiate the, the fire container. Then uh, when um, it's about a month, before a month of the moon dance, you already have, re uh, have ready the prayers. We pray 52 times, uh, 13, uh, 13 prays, uh, 
about knowledge, about inspiring things, about things that you want to, to learn or, uh, you know, something that maybe you want to heal from the um, children age. Um, then you have to pay, to make, well, at least you have to, to make 52 credits. Details when you are convinced that you will participate. Um, also, one month before, you have to pray sexual uh, fast completely. Um, and I suggest always to clean the colon uh, before going to the moon dance. At uh, this point, when you arrive, you are as soft as you can. And this way, when you are more open to receive medicine, and you don't feel the transformation too deep. Uh, I mean deep, but not strong. Um, the, the propose of the moon dance, we have eight mascalis or uh, yes, eight mascalis two before going into the circle, sorry, one before going into the circle and the other after the circle before going to sleep. The main purpose of the moon dance is that you understand who you are, not only who you are, but what you can do and where you can go, only because you exist. The, we, the dancers, I, I told you in the last Mascali, we, don't, we understand we came from the older kingdoms. We already were stones, we already were animals, we already were plants. So basically all that knowledge is inside of our body. So at this point, only fasting and dancing, because dancing is vibration, is going in a very low, high level of energy with the helping with the drum and the chants and all that vibration, then you get in a space or in a level that, that all visions start coming to you. But you need to be soft. You need to be like a feather to get there. If you are uh, heavy and you are whatever, then it's kind of, sorry, kind of difficult, or maybe you can, but the, the process will be painful. So that this is the preparation. And it's important to have vision when you arrive to the moon dance about what you, why you're going, why. And many women will write a letter and they compromise to say that they want to be, uh, they want to, to help the Mother Earth to, to heal. And it is important, and I always tell them, okay, it's important to know that the Earth knows how to heal itself. The point here is that you need to learn how to cure yourself. And you are ill or we are ill because we disconnect each other from our main purpose in life. So this is the moon dance help you to connect with the heart. That's why we don't give a lot of explanations because explanations are for mind. When you feel the calling, when you feel the, the ceremony, you don't need explanation of anything. It's, it's only a feeling. And when you are clear in that, then you decide to become a dancer for the whole life. You don't need nine years, you don't need four, you need a life to dance. And well, that's what I can share. I don't know if it's enough, <laughs> but I hope it is. Yes, that's amazing. Thank you for that, Ursula. Yael, I would love to also hear you. So Yael came to the moon dance this year for the first time. Um, and I would love to just for you to share anything that was relevant for you and maybe ask Ursula a question as well. Thank you so much for this space and it's Ursula, it's such a it's such an honor to to have you with us. And you know, I feel an incredible amount of gratitude to um, the openness and the generosity of which these these teaching and these and these practices are are shared, we you guys mentioned it a little bit earlier, you know, and it feels like now is really the time 
to share this knowledge and wisdom. You know, these, these, these ancient civilizations revered the earth and the sun and the moon and the elements and this knowledge has, has been forgotten. And so to be able to step into a container of the moon dance that is held with such embodied feminine leadership with the utmost integrity and experience the solidarity of 200 women in collective prayer reconnecting to the earth and fed by the radiance of the moon and to experience the the technology is the only way I can really describe it the the technology of the movements and of the dance and the energies that are cultivated is ancient technology and to experience that really profoundly changed me western culture is predominantly void of this level of honor and reverence for the natural world and these spaces and these rites of passage. And so connecting in this way awakens uh, a remembrance. And as these, as our systems break down and as we're experiencing ecological collapse and we're seeking guidance, it feels like these spaces that we're cultivating and also again, the generosity in which these ancient practices and the indigenous cultures are shared feels very, very precious. And I feel so grateful to be able to experience them and that, you know, we're, we're now sharing some of this with, with all of these viewers that are tuning in and genuinely hungry for these spaces and for this type of connection to the self and to the natural world. So, so thank you for that. And um, I also wanted to share about um, Magdalena, you called your, your partner, your duality, which I love that so much. <laughs> um, my partner, my duality, Alain, was also able to join. And um, for him, it was such a powerful experience to be in devotional service to the feminine and to witness the amount of dedication and power and strength and magic that was cultivated within these four days that he feels called to also invite the brothers to experience what it is like to hold the sacred container for the feminine to do this work. And so um, wanted to presence that and share that because it is as powerful for the masculine to experience this as it is for the feminine. And the other thing I deeply admire, uh, Ursula, about your, your leadership is that, you know, these practices tend to, they, they can be dogmatic. You know, it was done a certain way for so many years, but I really admire the way in which you tune into the energies and understand contextually what is relevant for our time and are evolving the tradition and are opening the circles to the men, even if it just in that moment, because that's what the energy called for and that's what felt right. And so thank you for, for being so deeply in the listening and embodying that for, for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to share something important. Uh, also, one of the objectives of the moon dance is that you you learn how to enjoy life daily and how to face the, the true difficult moments of the life. And when you feel that everything is going down and you feel sad or whatever emotion that is experiencing and that you suddenly have this force or this will to go ahead and then understand and and you know see and accept that is a teaching to you only to you and when you when you identify that moment and you pray or or use these tools that we in the moon dance give the, the pipe or the fire and go inside of you and see why this is happening to me. What's the objective? Why should I learn? And understand that all that is happening outside, it's, it's not depending exactly of others, but of you. Then you are ready to live and die daily. Then at this point, 
all what is happening in the world or, or other things that other groups of people are planning to do like this pandemic thing, then it's, it's not, you are ready to front that, to face that because you are in peace, because you are living daily in the best manner you can. You don't have that, you don't have any pending because what we we'll try the best to, to teach in the moon dance is that you have to do it, to do everything the best way you can, expressing gratitude for the chance that you exist so basically you expressing love, expressing service, then you were ready to, to go to the sky again or to heaven at any moment. So you, are, you don't have fear. And living without fear is living free. So that's the main or one of the main objectives of the moon dance as well. Okay, thank you. Mm. Thank you for that, Ursula. I and I second what you said, yeah, like for me the um, like seeing the the level of leadership that these abuelas have have been I think the first expression uh, or the highest expression of feminine leadership I, I ever seen has been in you, Ursula, and, and the grandmothers that you bring to the circle because it's this um, this image of uh, of the gentle warrior, right? That's how I see our grandmothers of like warriors coming with their heart and and giving so much, but also um, holding a container that is like very strong in a way where there is no place uh, for any kind of misbehavior. Like the container is so strong, but there is so much love in it. There is so much heart put into it, and and having that combination is it's really beautiful to see embodied in our grandmothers. And and for me, one of the main uh, purpose of these calls as well that we're doing with power are to share these voices, to share the voices of our grandmothers that carry this wisdom of how we can embody the feminine in its highest expression. And what an irony that this virus that we're going through touches the elders the most, because maybe this is a wake up call for us to, to actually look at our elders and to hear what they have to say and to learn from them and to absorb that wisdom that only comes through experience and that our circles embodies with this nine year initiation. It's only experience can give us this deep wisdom that these grandmothers carry with them and, and, and the commitment, the commitment to, to being in devotion, to living a life of devotion. Um, so I wanted to maybe get some questions from the audience. Uh, a lot of you are reacting. Uh, yeah, please raise your hand if you want to come into the circle. Um, we're at 11 a.m. We're going to keep going for 15 minutes. Uh, so feel free to jump in, raise your hand. Yeah, very cool. We're going to get a few. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Danny. We can see you. Yeah, we can see you, we can hear you. If you can unmute yourself. Great, thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi, thank you. Hi everyone. Um, this is so beautiful. I was just, I'm not sure if I missed it because I came a little bit late, but I was just, I asked in the comments, I don't know if you saw it, I said, which moon dance is this one? Where in the world does it take place? And usually at what time of the year do you do this dance? Yeah, we put it in, in the comments. So it's in Mexico, in Bacalar, and we do it once a year in the full moon of March. Okay. Is I there a reason why you're fun. asking that question? or? Oh, just because I feel called to go to a dance and 
where I am right now, it's, it's not like, do I want to dance or do I not want to dance? I know I do want to dance. Um, and I have so many different friends that go to different ones. The one in Costa Rica, the one in Mexico, there's a new one starting this year in Mount Shasta. I heard they're starting one in Israel. So now I'm just like, which one do I want to go to? Okay. And, and also just trying to find out the differences between them. And, and, um, the one woman who spoke, I think her name is, is it Alice or Alice? Um, what she was just saying about like, this one wasn't really for me, but this one was more for me and just trying maybe to figure out where, where I might fit well. Mm. And you're also beautiful. Wow. Such a nice. <laughs> Thank you. Girl. Thank you for, for sharing that. Ursula, you want to speak to that? Yes, sure. Yeah. Well, basically we, the most of the circles come from the same, that is the grandmother to Um Not all, but the most. And it's the same, the same, uh, the most of the, of the procedures, I mean, the, the way we pray, the colors, the altar, even the, the, uh, the songs sometimes are kind of same. What is different in Bacalar, what I did different is that we have the, the workshops um, directed by, different other grandmothers. And this next year, when you are in the third year, I will be leading one of the workshops directly with the women of the third year. Um, also, we have a meditation that we call it All in Cuepa. That's a Toltec meditation, like yoga, but Toltec. Um, this is only here. And also we have Aztec dance. Before the, these, we stop the dance to pray with the pipes, we have one Aztec dance for each direction. So that's the difference. And also we have fire around because, well, I don't know if in, in, in France have, but here we have fires because the spirits of the jungle, of the Mayan jungle, are, they, they need an altars around. So we do that. And well, basically that's the difference. But also Ectemascal is one, the essence of the moon dance is the fire uh, next to the Temascalis, uh, the room to, to pray with the songs and the, and the guy. So all is the same four and the difference I told you and the guy, <laughs> that's all, okay. Yeah, and I guess the, the, the main difference really is, uh, is the guide. The, um, because the whole experience is um, tinted by the grandmother that guides it. And, and it's beautiful how it actually allows you to have your own expression of it in many ways. So the grandmothers can introduce different elements like uh, uh, Abuela Ursula was saying. Um, and kind of create their own flavor of it. And, and also once you have a guide that, that, that grandmother also invites other grandmothers to come into the circle. And for me, it was so beautiful to see this year all the grandmothers that were there because they're like, each one is their own archetype. You have the, the nice grandmother, you have the mean one, you have the one that is like really like super into like exercises, the more ritualistic one. So each one has their own little flavor and you can learn something from each one of them they're, they're all their own medicine and you obviously like connect with some and maybe less with others or maybe some trigger you uh, in some ways so but they're all reflections of each other um, but I would say the most important thing to to choose your circle I don't really think you choose I think it, it actually chooses you but but the most important part to feel is, um, is the grandmother. And I remember when Maria told me about Abuela Ursula because she went to the main, main circle and she met Ursula and she was like, you're going to see Ursula, you're going to understand why we're going to the circle. And <laughs> she said, she said, grandmother warrior, this is what we need. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's a pure reflection. We also have Alexandrina here in the circle. I want to ask a question. Um, I would love to open it up to you. Thank you, Magdalena, and thank you, Abuela Ursula, and everyone else. It's such an honor um, to meet you virtually. And 
thank you for opening the space for these deep teachings to be shared now globally. Uh, Moon Dance has been orbiting me since 2017. And what I wanted to ask is for the months you mentioned, it's a year long commitment um, for nine years, but throughout the year, as some of us are called, some of us are just curious, what are practices that we can cultivate throughout the year, both to prepare us to step into that place if the time is right, um, and also just to deepen our own connection to the moon? I mean, do you mean what you do the, 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 the next, I mean, the, in the year? I, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, uh, Ursula, she's asking like, what, what can some women do if they're not yet in the moon dance and want to prepare for it or like start doing certain practices before joining a circle uh, throughout the year to connect with that space of the moon or the feminine or the womb, right? Wow. Well, I think that the, the best way that we can connect with ourselves is to do what we love to do. If you like play a, a drummer or a daughter or whatever, then do it. And then doing what is good and make you feel happy. And if you connect with the moon, for example, that's the, the message to your mind and your heart. And what is interesting is that we have in the, in the, in the cells a memory. And if you do it month by month, Let's imagine that you like to play the guitar and you play the guitar in the full moon and then you have a nine, that's the ritual for you. And then your body will know that the next month you will do the same and then start feeling good. And that's the way we educate our different bodies to feel good. We need the rituals. We need them to start programming our bodies to connect in the, in the world with precious moments. Once you get that, then you don't need the rituals because then you feel good and you feel happy always, no? or try the best. And that's, that's what can I share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks Ursula. And, and yes, it's just for some of you in the audience, just like connecting uh, with the moon cycles and just being aware of them. Just having your own ritual for, for the new moon and your own ritual for the full moon so that you can start aligning your own body with, with the cycles of the moon. And so you suddenly, uh, it's not about yourself, but you become something bigger than yourself. And by doing that, you also align with other women uh, on this planet so that we can harmonize with each other and, and harmonize with earth and the moon. Um, so we, what we do uh, in the circle is uh, every full moon we, uh, we smoke our pipe, which is uh, an instrument of prayer. And we smoke this tobacco that's ceremonially um, grown and, and we pray with our pipe to the different directions. And, and on the new moon we, we have our copal burner that it's like a, the representation of our womb, that uh, it's basically like a cleanse of our womb that we do on every new moon. But you can build your own, like Ursula was saying, you can build your own ritual, whatever like feels good for you to do on, on new moon, which is more internal, and on the full moon, which is more external, and, and just start practicing that uh, in alignment with the moon cycles. Um, thank you. So uh, I would like, uh, is there any other questions or I would, otherwise we're going to start uh, kind of closing. It's 11.11 here in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, do you, do you also have any, any other closing remarks that you want to do? Otherwise I would love, I would love for Ursula to maybe close uh, with some closing remarks. Uh, I was wondering if it's appropriate to ask for a, a song or a chanting. <laughs> but okay. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Okay. Well, I would like to to respond this. Um, Josefina wrote, "What is the commitment during the year once you complete your first moon dance ceremony?" Okay. Yes, that's a good question because that's important to understand. We dance, but not when you finish the, the moon dance. You didn't finish anything. You you once you arrive home. You start the real work because then you have to remember what you pray. You pray 52 times and then you ask for something because that's the idea. The dancers think that we ask, but we have to do something to get that. So before we do the fast, the dance, the sweet lodge, and then we start receiving what we ask for. So you have a year to receive and then to deal with that. And sometimes women ask me or call me, Ursula, I asked for being pregnant and now I'm pregnant and I don't know what to do. Okay, so why? Then what, what are you praying if you are not ready? Or, I mean, the, 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 the praise are listen. And then that's the, the main uh, purpose of the year. To, come, to understand what you prayed and then what you're gonna pray the next year. Because you cannot pray in a day or at night. You cannot pray 52 times. You have all year to think about it, to feel about it, and then to prepare to the next chance. The moon dance is like the opportunity to, to get close to the divine. And if you understand that, then you prepare yourself for that moment. So basically, also we have each full moon, we have a council and we meet each other, the most of women here around. We sing the songs, we start the pipes, we, we talk each other about how we feel. And if there is a service we can do or support other moon dance. So the whole year is plenty of activity, okay? So also I would like to mention that um, nowadays, I have read and, and, and I have seen a lot of stuff about uh, divine feminine. And, mm, and it's a personal opinion. And I think that we have to honor our existence. But if you honor your existence, believing that you only are, or the most sacred thing that you have is being women, then you haven't understand anything. Because if you identify, completely identify yourself with what you see in the mirror, and you only see a woman, then your conscious needs more evolution. We always need more evolution, but one of the features that we have now in our existence is that now, today, we are women, but not after. We don't know, not, not before this life. So you cannot be limited by, by this idea. Honor your place, but not only honor it. Do what you have to do. If you're a woman, then do it and do it well. But is if you try or put energy to feel like more than is indeed or more, I mean, being realistic, men or women, we both are the same in the existence, but we have different things to do. That's why I want, I invite men to the circle to support, to take care of us. Because at this point, we are conscious of the place we play in this existence. We need each other and no one is more divine than other. At the time that you only, that, that you uh, express more love or more, or making this uh, hashtag divine feminine, you need to understand that if you are doing this and this, what the, the men are feeling now. How they feel when I write, write that on Facebook, or how they feel when they, when they uh, 
read that in the newspaper or imagine the opposite that in any place you go or any Facebook or anything you open, the divine masculine. So like, what happened? So I invite you to, to be conscious about it. If you want to, to mention something about, wow, the divinity, the, the, the great spirit or whatever, don't leave it only for one uh, men or women. It's, it's general because honestly, I don't feel good <laughs> with that because I have my, my son and my husband and then my brother say, okay, sorry for that. <laughs> it's not me, it's something that is happening, okay? Because you, honestly, they, they sometimes feel like, okay, stop doing that. We, we, are, we are necessary also. Yes, yes, but something is happening with some women, but please share that. We, we, all, are, we all are important and we all are the children of the sun, the children of the grandmother earth. And the sun comes day by day without any difference, men or women. So that's my invitation, okay? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ursula. What an honor to be part of your circle and to, and to have you as our guide um in this journey into the moon realms and so beautiful to be able to share this um with other women and with the world in these such important times the timing of our last circle on march 7 was so specific with what's happening in the world right now so i do believe it's happening for a reason and i can't wait to see where we are in next March 2021. Um, if you feel called to, uh, would you close with a chant? Is that appropriate? Or <laughs> we have our moon dance chants. Uh... <laughs> Let me bring my, 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 uh, my give me a second because I don't have a, uh... yeah. The drum, yeah. We have one here that was actually made by Ursula's husband. Well, a drum, well, I don't, I prefer this. It's ah, okay. okay. Okay, perfect.
ready. <laughs> mm, I hope. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you for your devotion, for sharing it with us and with everyone here. Thank you, Moon Sisters, for sharing this, this journey with me as well, with us. Mm. Thank you to all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Recorded, so it's gonna be online on Power. Power that life, we're gonna share it in on there. If you wanna get in touch with any of us, please do it on our Facebook page. Thank you, and thank you for joining us, everyone. <laughs>